Welcome to episode 45 of the Woodwind Doubling Channel. I'm trying something different today. I thought of a subject for an episode, but I thought, well, I don't really have to play anything for this episode, and I don't really have any uh, visuals to put up. So uh, how about uh, just go out for a walk, since it's just such a nice sunny day, and talk to you guys directly while I'm doing this. So today's topic is actually uh, playing in uh, community bands and other community groups. I'm often asked, uh, how can I practice all my doubles? You know, people work away at uh, method books and excerpts and they want to try, you know, actually putting things into practice. Well, the way that I actually got my chops together wasn't necessarily so much in the practice room as it was um, in rehearsals with, uh, with community groups. I grew up playing in uh, community concert bands. In fact, I, at one point I'd be going to two or three of them a week uh, minimum too. Plus I was playing in uh, various ensembles at school, uh, in high school to begin with and then later on at college. And so I was playing all of my doubles and things almost constantly. Um, so the trick was of course don't play your principal instrument in a community band. Go there and play one of your doubles. Work on that. You know even if it means uh, grabbing a clarinet and sitting in the back row playing third clarinet until you get comfortable going over the break try that out and get those chops together. Uh, likewise with flute. The guys that I know that developed good flute chops were actually going out to uh, community bands and things like that and playing flute all the time and uh, that got, uh, got a lot of reading done that way too, got their ledger lines working properly for them. And obviously then you can also do uh, the double read practice in community concert bands. Now, as far as bassoon parts go, they don't tend to be so taxing. They tend to be, you know, kind of almost baseline like, you know, which can be good in terms of just developing some basic reading skills and, uh, and uh, just getting your chops going. You gotta watch out on bassoon that you don't try and overblow the rest of the band and try and come up to the saxophone level. Bassoon isn't as powerful an instrument as that. And if you try and compensate for, you know, that sort of desired level of power, you're going to kill yourself, you're going to play a hard setup, uh, you're going to have tuning issues all over the place. So watch out for that when you're uh, playing bassoon in, uh, in a community concert band uh, situation. Oboe, um, the only thing you've got to watch out for there is that they tend to write way too much. Uh, in orchestral music and in show music, they're smart enough to use the oboe somewhat sparingly. Uh, use it for its color in concert bands. They kind of want to have lots of people playing lots of the time. Everybody feels involved that way. Learn to look out for places where you can maybe rest yourself in the music, where there's intensive 2D doubling going on and you're really just duplicating, say, something that the clarinets are doing. Look for opportunities like that so you can rest yourself a bit. Uh, you're not going to find as much opportunity to play English horn, but uh, boy, if you uh, can play English horn for some of the more challenging repertoire in band music, uh, you'll be really popular. People will want you there because there's some uh, significant stuff, really nice stuff, in the community band repertoire or wind ensemble repertoire that has beautiful English horn solos and you know so much of the time it gets and ends up getting cued onto alto sax and it's really not the same thing at all. So there's, an, there's another outlet for the uh, double reads. Uh, now conversely if you're coming at doubling from the point of view of being a flute, oboe or bassoon player and you're moving or clarinet and you're moving on to saxophone Sure, use a community band as a place to, uh, to work on that. You might uh, look into community big bands as well, because then you get a chance to practice on uh, reading in uh, jazz and pop styles and things like that, which is something, you'll find a mix of that in, in uh, community band things. You'll find anything from uh, old chestnut classics to uh, pop things to uh, quasi-jazz kind of things to uh, you know contemporary band repertoire, which can be quite challenging at times. You're not going to really find a lot of extended range reading. You're not going to get up into the altissima and all that. But, you know, really, that doesn't come up so much in show music either. So, if you're, if you're coming from one of the other instruments to the saxophone, there's a great way to work out. It, it's a great way to sort of cross over on any of your instruments and uh, move back and forth. And in fact, I've even done doubling situations in band music. If you're playing in, a, say, a community band that is sparsely staffed, uh, they might uh, prefer you playing one particular instrument to bolster up a section, but they may have some significant solo things where you could then say, okay, tell you what, I can duck out here, cover this part, then come back to it, and create a new doubling situation for yourself to play in. You know, I've done things where I've been playing 
literally a clarinet in the, on a on a concert, and then I've switched over to uh, like oboe or English horn to cover off an important solo. Um, you can find opportunities. You can make you find ways to do that and to get more playing done. Now, you want to make sure that you're you're trying to play with better players all the time. So that that's why I always say work on your doubles in the band, not in your principal instruments. If you're a saxophone player principally, uh, community band stuff on saxophone usually is not going to be super taxing. But if you're a saxophone player who's working on their clarinet uh, chops, you definitely want to dig in there and really, you'll get a lot of reading done. The first clarinet parts and band material, they regularly run up to uh, Fs and Gs on the top of the horn. You'll get a workout in terms of the range, you'll get a workout over the break. The one thing you won't get as much a lot of the time is a workout in uh, sort of more remote keys. Band music is famous for being written in uh, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, gee, maybe even C once in a while. But uh, if you really want to develop your skills on your uh, in in various keys, that's going to have to be done, you know, in your own time. You will find, I mean, you will find occasional challenges in that, even within those keys, where people sort of, uh, you know temporarily modulate, you may find some super challenging passages. I remember the first time I had to play uh, Von Williams' Toccata Martial on bassoon. There's this insane bassoon part near the end, all in 16th notes, and it's like this whole tone run up and down. And because of where it's placed on the horn, it's very, very tricky to do. It involves the thumbs and the uh, little fingers a lot on that sort of uh, break crossing area that the bassoon has. Uh, so it, literally the run was going, I believe, from C down to a G flat and then back up. So it's moving back and forth with thumb, little fingers and stuff. You're, it's really a tricky thing to get together. And my technique grew because of that. It was, it was useful in my education as a bassoonist. I also, uh, I used, when I was in college, ended up playing uh, go back out of the wind here. When I was in college, I ended up playing quite a lot of oboe. And uh, oboe is, you know, wisely used as a very soloistic instrument in concert band repertoire. So you can often get a lot of, you know, time on that, work on the vibrato, work on just really making the instrument sing. And those are all useful skills as well. Other thing is if you're uh, if you're a saxophonist who needs to spend time working on uh, clarinet and also bass clarinet, E-flat clarinet, those are great places to do it. Again, bass clarinet sometimes in a concert band can be a little much, a little like a reed tuba, but then you'll find these occasional things. If the, if the band you're playing with is playing really high quality repertoire, you'll find that the parts are usually better, more interesting, lots more stuff to do. So that's one of the things I'd certainly highly recommend. And oftentimes, at least around here, I find that uh, a lot of the people that are drawn for community uh, theater things are actually sourced through community orchestras and community concert bands. So it's kind of an ideal place to get some connections and get into that kind of playing, especially if, like I say, you've been making yourself some opportunities to double within the band context. Uh, one of the other things that I, I, I got to do a bit as well is uh, spend a bit of time conducting, waving the stick as well. You know, uh, it's a useful skill to have. I, I don't really think of it as being the same as another double, but I certainly know uh, woodwind players who've gone on to be uh, uh, assistant conductors on shows and things like that. So getting a bit of conducting skill is a good idea. Um, I've also used it over the years to uh, work on writing things because uh, concert bands are always looking for decent material. There's so much stuff that's just poorly written, uh, too poppy, too easy. Uh, you can do a little bit of uh, writing as well. Uh, I've Over the years I've probably run, done 40 or 50 charts for concert band uh, and acquiring that skill has also meant that uh, when I've done things as a guest soloist uh, I could do a lot of my own arrangements for it and rather than just picking something off the shelf that everybody's playing, uh, being able to arrange your own charts, very very useful thing. Uh, that can uh, make some money at it too later on. Uh, that was one of the other things that uh, led me to doing uh, guest entertainer arrangements. I've done a lot of those now. I have a show that I'm putting together 
one of the shows being uh, film and TV music and the other one being a big band show. And uh, in it, I will be doubling and playing uh, pick, flute, clarinet, penny whistle, uh, soprano sax and alto sax. I would have loved to take tenor sax as well, but it's just a little too unwieldy to uh, pack all of that stuff. It can give it, get into a bit of a nightmare flying. Over the years, I've done uh, uh, several concerts with uh, community bands as a guest soloist as well. Uh, and uh, being in touch with that, the whole sort of the band culture and that network, it's got a lot of useful benefits of its own. Just a connection with people. So there's a couple of ideas. You can take it and run with it. You know, get to, get some basic chops together on your uh, clarinet if you're coming from another instrument, and uh, go uh, go work yourself out. You can work all the kinks out. Get your technique together. Get your sound and your facility together by playing in a community band. Do the same thing with the flute, the oboe, the bassoon, everything. Do it with the saxophone if you're coming from the other woodwinds. You know. It's, it's a place to go and play, usually weekly. Uh, hopefully, uh, doesn't, it's not too expensive a thing. I mean, some, I know that some community groups, just to make sure that they can afford to pay for music these days, uh, will have some sort of a membership fee. Uh, but really, when you look at the, the, the practical benefits that you can get from that, it's worth doing. I'm fortunate here that uh, the community band actually has uh, access to a fairly nice concert hall and so it's also a nice place to play musically it's raised the uh, level of the band i mean when you are looking out for bands you know if you're if you're in a largely a densely populated kind of urban area like i am uh, you've got to you can pick and choose sometimes where you want to go you can find out you know what bands playing some quality material what they need in terms of bodies uh, quite often, if you are willing to sit on the lower chairs and, uh, and not be a star for a while, but just sort of sit back and, and work on things and just, you know, play musically the best you can, uh, they'll really appreciate you. And also then the, the people who are sitting in the first chairs uh, won't resent you. They won't think that you're trying to steal their gig. But, you know, if you develop your technique in that, when the time comes uh, and you need to step in and possibly fill a chair, you know, Somebody doesn't make it, can't make it to the concert. Somebody's injured, whatever else, you know, you can step up and do that. You'll be prepared for the gig. Well, that should about wrap it up for this episode of the Woodwind Doubling Channel, episode 45. Uh, getting some experience by playing in community bands. Um, in fact, I'm going to go do that later on tonight, and uh, I might even just be sitting back and playing, you know one of the lower clarinet parts or maybe uh, one of the lower flute parts or, uh, or who knows, I might be playing E-flat clarinet tonight. I have no idea. I'll take a few things with me and I'll, and I'll play what benefits the sound of the group best at the time. Right, till next time, uh, please, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. And uh, if you've got questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. Uh, I'd love to get uh, interactive with people on the channel itself sometimes because i have other outlets around uh, like facebook and the uh, sax on the web forum sometimes i get questions directly through for, through there and it's always appreciated but it'd be great if you could uh, put them if it's concerning stuff on the channel put it on the channel uh the, the traffic really uh, helps me out a lot all right uh, thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye